Here's a video for my A-level students. Uh, many of you at some point are going to need to check the status of inputs and perhaps you'll only check the status of one input. So maybe uh, you're going to repeatedly poll the value of a port bit until it meets a condition, then your program can carry on. But there's a, a very good chance you'll actually want to do um, a check where two bits uh, need to be set or cleared or, or whatever the value are. Uh, before uh, the program continues. Now, there's several ways that I've seen students do this. These are the two most common ways. I'll have a look at those first, and then I will uh, suggest this is something that you might also want to consider because these actually have a problem. So uh, this first method, it's fairly intuitive. Uh, let's say that we want the program only to continue to the end if RB0 is set and RB2 is set. And first, we check whether RB0 is set. If it's not, then we keep on checking it. Once it is set, then we move on to check RB2. So let's have a look at some code here. So uh, this, I've just made a little test subroutine here. And now I've um, simulated some data being loaded, which is all zeros into port B. And then I'm going to bit test file and skip if set. So the skip if set is, means skip this next line if port B RB0 is set, you know, because it's got an S there. So it's going to repeatedly poll this. Now, hopefully you can see that RB0 is not set, so it's going to keep on repeatedly uh, running over this code. So let's, um, let's see if we can call this. This is test one, so we've got a call to test one here. And let's put a breakpoint in there. And now let's run the simulation. So we're now at that point in the code. And we will press uh, F7 just to go to the next line. So now you can see that port B, if you look over on the right hand side, here you see the port B is set to all zeros. So bit test file skip if set. Well, um, port B is not, um, RB0 is not set. So it's going to repeatedly keep on checking. OK, so it's going to keep on doing the go to. Now, if I just double click the value for port B there, and I will now set manually set RB0 like that, the next time we check it, it can now skip. And then uh, it's going to repeatedly check RB2. Remember, it's not checking RB0 anymore, so irrespective of whether RB0 changes at this point, we're now only checking RB2. And that's one of the weaknesses of this method. So uh, let's go back to port B. And let's uh, change that bit. So that's RB2. And now this time around, we skip, go to, and then we can return. So um, it sort of works. However, what we're really doing, we're just sequentially checking and we're first of all checking whether RB0 is true. And then if it is true, then start checking RB2. And at the point of when we're checking RB2, RB0 may have changed, but we're not checking that again. So this is a slight improvement, this method. Uh, it starts off in a very similar fashion. So we're checking the status of RB0. And then when it passes the test, then we go on to RB2, but if it fails the test, it will then force to start on RB0 again. So it's a slight improvement. I, I still don't think it's a great improvement, but it is a slight improvement. So let's uh, call test two this time. Let's clear the breakpoint. Let's uh, add a breakpoint in there. Let's just stop. By the way, that's just broken because we've just got to stop and then restart there. And apparently not. It's still. Oh, I, I can see why. Yeah, because I was trying to add a breakpoint to the um, the procedure name, which you can't do. I have a breakpoint there. You can. Now let's just uh, run this simulation. And so we're going to load it up with zeros again. Notice I've got a uh, a loop label here. And let's continue then in the code. So I'm going to move some. Uh, move the all zeros into port B. So port B is now all zeros. And I'm going to repeatedly check whether RB0 is set, which is not. OK, so this time around port B, I will make the least significant bit, which is RB0 a 1. So next time we check it, 
sure enough, it's now passed that condition. And then if this condition is not met, and it won't be, then it's going to start checking RB0 again. So um, that's actually, in a way, that's quite good because it's like going back and just checking RB0 still is has passed the condition. And then when RB2, let's change RB2, RB2 also passes, then it can uh, continue. So I think if I had to choose between these two uh, flowcharts or algorithms, this one is slightly better. However, there is a much better one, which is this, which we're going to move on to next.